Vom Knudsen, who knocked out their Historia for, uh, uh, sorry, for Das Leben, for Das Leben. Um, so we have the word there, Historia, as I mentioned before, not the ordinary German word, uh, Geschichte, ordinary German word for history. Uh, we have this um, transliteration of the Greek word, apparently. Um, and Heidegger says, uh, Nietzsche does not properly distinguish between history and historiology. Uh, so this rise in consciousness is one of the themes here. Um, language was around for a long time before grammarians came in, before grammarians started saying you're making grammatical errors, you're making mistakes. You can see that in uh, this concept in uh, Heidegger's um, you know, I criticized Heidegger uh, on the basis of the idea of that there's a Heideggerian orthodoxy, or I criticized the Heideggerians, and uh, I want to say that's part of the loyal opposition, as it were. Um, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to take that in the other direction, we can see what Heidegger's doing when we think about it this way. Is Heidegger talks all the time about um, we're not we're going to distrust grammar. We're going to go to the Saka instead, the subject matter instead. So you can see that in this idea of the um, something's already happening in the world and then it rises to this scientific consciousness. The, the science of grammar comes in and there's a split comes in. The very concept of Dasein is like that. It's, there's a split and this very split makes the, uh, the wiling possible. It makes it possible for there to be a while with the thing where the human being then splits off and has this choice to go one way or the other with anything that's there for them. The wiling itself seems to have a mysterious character of why certain things snap into existence. Um, here, so we're, like I was saying, it's, um, you know, Eric Wein, uh, his name Eric Weinstein has a podcast, The Physicist, he cautions against a layman using physicists uh, terms of physics modern physics and as metaphors but um, I'm going to excuse this continued use of this metaphor uh, by um, saying it's a concept of pure mathematics the uh, Cantor infinity uh, so we can go into these decimal infinities at any moment um, and of course mathematics is part of um, philosophy from its beginning and Nietzsche mentions the uh, jaded idlers in the uh, garden of knowledge. So, you know, Plato had this sign over his school, which existed for, I think, more than a thousand years after he's gone, and Cicero hung out there. This is a real place. And he had this sign, you know, you have to, no one who doesn't know geometry come in here. And this idea was still very alive, the, uh, the uh, connection between geometry as a sort of lower part of the higher part of the intellect, the highest part being, um, sometimes they use noose to mean the whole intellect, sometimes they use as the higher part and has evolved into higher ideas like justice and uh, moral ideas. And Aquinas, for instance, says even God can't make a triangle that's all the, the sum of which angles don't equal two right angles. And I don't know, it would be interesting to know what the Catholics do with the um, uh, the non-Euclidean um, triangle, they might have some, uh, they might simply dismiss it as um, not what they're talking about, or I don't know what they say about that. But in any case, this last, this idea of the intellect uh, being connected to mathematical thinking, mathematical thinking having this powerful um, reality of its own so much so that even God can't um, alter the character of a triangle, uh, had a long life. Um, and uh, I mean, you have some people like Penrose that give some lip service to the idea that Plato's ideas of math, but it's not largely taken very seriously. Um, so let's go into one of the decimal infinities is the juridical issues that Nietzsche's uh, the whole sphere of the sound of history coming into the 19th century, the floorboards creaking with that, leads into the Nazi period and Carl Schmidt. And there's, so we have your 
Thord Knudsen, von Knudsen und Nachtel, der Historia für das Leben. So that could be advantage or it could be use. And in the National Socialist Handbook for Law and Legislation, there's something that's, I mean, this may have been written by Carl Schmidt, it may have been written by someone else, but it's a huge thousand page work. And we talk about all this was dem Volke nutzt, correct. So everything that's useful or advantageous to the folk is right. Uh, and then the opposite is all this was dem schadet ist unrecht. That everything that is harmful is is on is uh, wrong, and um, you can contrast that um, with the saying uh, "my country, right or wrong," which admits the existence of right or wrong. So this connects to Leo Strauss's whole um, career, his whole think, all his thinking connected to um, law and justice. Um, and the Jewish tradition it said that man is, exists for the sake of the law, of the law or for the Torah. This is why man is prolonged on the earth for the sake of the law. So it's a great um, theme of the whole history of the West. Um, and this is a break. This shows how the historicism broke from the whole tradition. When we contemplate this uh, national socialist principle, it's laid down as a principle. It's not just like... Uh, a petty criminal has decided to uh, break the law, but it's laid down as a high principle. And you notice that um, it's not, what I want to bring out is it's not exactly the same as the common distinction between the positive law, the law in the books, and the natural law. Uh, the, the law has it would be derived by um, human reason alone, just by, for instance, Cicero says that we can um, observe that country that, that different peoples all over the place follow uh, a few um, basic laws in common, and th this gives rise to this um, a kind of Roman um, practical. Uh, I don't really like the word practical because it contains, but it's just sort of an easy way to to derive it out of common sense uh, usage, so to speak. Common sense is is another um, decimal infinity issue that we had go into and it links to um, Leo, what Leo Strauss calls the citizen's understanding, which is a modified version of this notion of common sense, which in Aristotle was, um, uh, Aristotle had to coin a term for um, for that, which they didn't have a term for uh, common sense in any way in his time. Uh, so the subtle thing here is that it doesn't say that whatever the laws of the uh, Reich are, in the crude sense of the Nuremberg laws, uh, you know, you could take Nuremberg to mean that we do whatever we're told to do, but it also mean, it could, is taken to mean whatever the laws on the books are under the Nazi uh, regime or, or what or all we have. But this doesn't say that because it says, because the what's what's good, what's uh, Knudsen for the, um, what's advantageous for the Volk, could be different than what's actually um, de facto on the law books. So this uh, this brings in a, um, a principle that never existed before, and this is part of what's happening in this time period, the um, sloughing off of the universal um, principle of reason. And part of that is because the, the, there's no longer a proper belief that in the old Catholic idea, which runs something along the lines of in intellectus uh, adequatio et re, which is that um, I can just apprehend something, a shoe or whatever it is, and uh, God has made it so that I'm, I, I get it right. I understand it. I, I grasp I, I intuit the essence. But this, the belief in the um, intuition of the essence that goes away um, with Kant and with the um, prolonged uh, contemplation of the, um, uh, the uh, transcendental access to reality. Was I, I go to Kant more than to Descartes because Descartes, this doesn't come so clear. With Kant, this idea that there are some things that are necessary to any uh, experience, and he says time and space. And so we have this crude idea of uh, time and space being necessary to any um experience, which is then people like Spengler explicitly say, well, what about a visionary who doesn't um, fall by these rules? Kant says, if I'm in a, a carriage going across uh, Koenigsberg 
and I fall asleep, I can be sure that I've uh, transversed that, that, that um, space. Um, okay, let's stop there for the moment again, unfortunately.